Set up wars when the kids themselves pray. Or truly do you believe that Jesus is listening? My kids were little, maybe there are reasons and just the seriousness of it. You see those when they pray, but they pray so hard. Isn't that amazing? They just it's so cool. Seeing that just encourages me. It just encouraged me so much how they uh, to have a faith like that, you know, to have a faith like a child. They just they really believe that God is listening when they're praying. You know, to pray is to believe. And we pray because we believe. Amen, church. So CFLC, just like our children, do we still believe that God is still listening? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, we can learn a thing or two from these kids. You know, when I ask these kids to pray, like I say, CPK, either like a closing prayer or opening prayer, when I ask them to pray, without hesitation, bow their heads and start crying. Same with our youth. It didn't start out that way, but now it's all good. Now they just be worried that they might not be doing it correctly. Or disruptors break in and steal the time away. Or their prayers are wooden and lifeless, perhaps only repeating words learned in childhood, but never engaging their minds and their hearts. But this is the opposite of what prayer should be. Prayer should not be a burden, but a privilege. A privilege God has graciously given us because He enjoys fellowship with His saints. I mean, let's look at some chart that I got from a Pew Research Center website. Can you show that for us, Brian? This is the frequency of prayer, the percent of adults who pray. It says that at least daily, 50, 55% of us pray. That's every day. 16% of us only pray once a week. Perhaps that's during Sunday at church. 6% of us says we only pray once a month. And then 23% never pray. And then that 1%, I hope none of us is the 1%, don't be. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks to them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. You may be seated. Through prayer. Through prayer. So God has been looking for prayer warriors, a prayer army. And guess what? You and I can be part of that if you are not already. Did you know that our church actually has this ministry? You probably heard of it. What is it called? We have an army for praying. We all know. CIA. Yes, we call it the CIA. What does it stand for? Christ Intercessory Army. Christ Intercessory Army. Christ Intercessory Army. We have that. We can be a part of that. To help our brothers and sisters fight the battle. But guess what? This battle shouldn't be as hard because we are not as been won, right? Jesus Christ has already won the battle. We just have to keep on praying. Yes. So I invite you to come and join us. Be part of this army. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m., we have a prayer meeting that happens every week. And as followers of Jesus Christ, it is our responsibility and privilege to pray for people. That's what it says in verse 1, right? We are to pray for our people. If it's our responsibility, there needs to be an obedience. Amen. So we need to obey. We are, that is,
is part of our responsibility. There has to be an ownership in this matter. And also it says that it is a privilege. If it's, if it's a privilege to pray, we should have like, oh. right? It's a privilege to pray. We're talking to the King of Kings. We're talking to the Creator of heaven and earth. We should be excited to pray. I remember when it was, uh, I guess, fourth grade, fifth grade, back in my old school in the Philippines, in a province called Roblo. Yes, I'm beside that. Um, I remember uh, uh, the, the, older, the older folks, they already got to college, so they, they've gotten to they go to Manila to go to universities. And like during fiestas, or even Christmas, those college folks, they would come back to our town um, and, and they become like the basketball players in the league, right? We call them mamasuistas. And they're like the coolest thing on earth, right? They're like the coolest people. So it says that this is God's desire. It pleases Him. Wow. It pleases Him. Wouldn't it be nice to please God? Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, there's sometimes we're like, oh, Lord, how can I please you? It's right here. Pray for people. Pray for people and they please with Him. And guess what? In verse 4, and all prayers are going to be used by God in bringing others, whether it's our family, our friends, our leaders, into a spiritually saving personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Pray for them save their soul that they could have personal relationship with Jesus Christ so church shouldn't these be more than enough to motivate us to pray and intercede for people see in biblical terms intercession involves someone faithfully and continually pleading particularly to God for the needs of another person the prayer is for the Lord to take action in their situation. And that is what we hope for. Correct, church? This morning we will see that the Bible records the intercession of Christ, the intercession of the Holy Spirit, as well as that of many godly men, and throughout both Old and New Testament. So let's expound more on that, starting with the intercession of Christ. See, Jesus himself did this. Who are we supposed to follow? Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that what Christian means? We are to be Christ-like. If we are to be Christ-like, we are praying. See, during his earthly ministry, Jesus prayed to those who were spiritually lost. Because they are the ones who came to seek and to save. And we can see that in Luke 19.10. And who are the spiritually lost. Those are the people who are going to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ yet, right? Do we still have that in this day? There are many. There are still many that are still spiritually lost. So if Jesus prayed for them, so should we. Amen, church. Jesus also prayed for his disciples both individually and as a group. Luke 22, 32. I love this prayer by Jesus. It says, But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon. Who's Simon? Peter, right? That's Peter. He says, But I have pleaded in prayer for you that your faith should not fail. And you have repented and turned to me again, strengthened your brothers. See, Jesus prays for, for someone, for a person. And he also prays as a group, but I'm not going to read that, but if you're interested, that's going to be John 17. That's like a whole chapter of just praying for his disciples, for a group of people. Like John 17 is, is one of those when you have a Bible that's like red in color, the whole chapter, or they don't know what they are doing. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? 
say it's cool and some of it took our lunch money. And we said, hey, Father, forgive them when they don't know what to do. The ministry, so that was the minister of Jesus while he was here on earth. Now he has ascended to heaven. So the minister of Jesus right now is to intercede for us to God the Father. Apostle John called Jesus an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. First John 2.1, this is what it says. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, regardless of that, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Wow. So Christ's intercession is necessary to our salvation and ongoing relationship with God. Without God's grace, mercy, and help that are made available through the constant prayer of Jesus, our relationship with God would what? Would fail. It would fail. We would fall away from Him and once again become slaves of sin. So that's something we gotta be grateful for, for Jesus. Jesus continues to do that right now. He's interceding for us. King of Jesus, right? In that church. I mean, without that, we have no chance. Because our flesh, our flesh wants to do what? The opposite of God. Right? What did the Apostle Paul say? I know what's right, but I don't do it. We know what it is. Isn't it? It's an open book, right? We know what we need to do, yet we don't. So that's why I'm so grateful that Jesus Christ just continues to intercede for us. Just like what he did to Peter, my like, Father, this guy, he didn't make it. So this is how I'm picturing it after I read this. So God the Father, so in heaven, he will say, hey, this guy, this guy is requesting this for me to have. Right or pray, he wants this. Then Jesus will say, oh, that's cool. I vouch for that person. He and I are in this way. But the Holy Spirit prays for us in Romans that cannot be expressed in words. The verse before I Romans 8 26. So if you attend a prayer meeting, you don't know what to pray. It's okay. As long as you're one with the Spirit of the Lord, just ask the Holy Spirit to teach us what to pray. And this is a promise. This is a promise. God will tell us what to pray. Okay? The Holy Spirit, through the human spirit of those who know Christ, intercedes in harmony with God's own will. See, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the one. So he knows exactly what God the Father wants. So when, when he tells us what to pray for, it's exactly what the God and Father wants because they are one. Does that make sense? Romans 8 27 says that the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. That is to say, the Holy Spirit communicates with the Father in perfect unity with God's purposes. In essence, Jesus intercedes for the believer from heaven, and the Holy Spirit intercedes within the believer on earth. Did I lost anyone? So, back to my illustration. So God the Father in heaven will say, this guy is requesting to be forgiven. 
Let's pray for him again. Amen. Again, Jesus will say, Oh, it's cool. I vow to a writer. Old Testament example of the power of intercessory prayer. There were times when he pleaded with God for the very lives of the future of God's chosen people. Moses. Moses. For example, when the Israelites rebelled against the Lord and refused to go to Canaan, God told Moses that he would destroy them and start a, gener a greater generation through Moses. If Moses would have been so selfish, he'd be like, oh, wow, I'm going to be like the start of everything. Right? But what happened? Moses then took the matter to the Lord and interceded for the people. Wow. And at the conclusion of Moses' prayer, God said, I will pardon them as you have requested. That's Numbers 14, 20. I will pardon them as you have requested. Wow. Because of Moses' intercession. God was ready to destroy all of Israelites. He would have destroyed every single one and start afresh, start anew in the life of God said, I will pardon them as you have requested. Prayer in one person makes a difference. Imagine if we all want to pray together. Amen, church. Amen. The, Noel, the New Testament also gives many examples of intercessory prayers. The Gospels regard how parents and other interceded with Jesus for their loved ones. Like parents pleading with Jesus to heal their sick children. Like group of mothers asking Jesus to bless their children. Can we still do this? Can we still ask Jesus to bless our children? Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan. But the, but the good news is for Jews and for Gentiles alike. Verse 20 I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for you as I should. I was amazed by this. I mean, this is Apostle Paul. We all know who Apostle Paul is. Majority of the epistles, the letters in the Bible, is written by Apostle Paul. Yet, he's asking them for prayers. He wants churches to pray for him, declaring that it will only happen, his ministry will happen, if churches pray. So if such a man as this asks for prayer, shouldn't we also ask for prayer? We should tell our church to pray for us. See, all his churches be united to pray as one for other people. My brothers and my sisters, who are we praying for as a church? Or what are we praying for as a church? Are we even part of that? Do we frequently intercede for other people? Or are we too busy praying about our own needs? There's nothing wrong with that. James says, you have not because you ask not. So we do pray for our own needs, but we need to go and go a step further as when we have to pray for other people.
we, we are to intercede, right? Because what we just read, we are to intercede for all people. And this reminds me of the event last Friday night. You guys know that event last Friday night? What is it called? The International Pentecost Celebration. And this happened at Pure Heart, Pure Heart Church last Friday. It was just amazing seeing different churches, many churches in the valley gathered in one church, representing many nations, different languages. Right? There's, there's, there's times that I'm working it's so hectic with my, my, my phone rings. Before I pick it up, there's that five second prayer, but I'm going to help this one. Right? It has to be second nature. Like, we are just so ready. simple. It's not our heart. We can all do it. Prayer is simply talking to God. And God speaks with us through what? God speaks to us through the Bible. Both are essential and both are gifts God has given us so we can know Him. Prayer is a gift from God's hand just as much as the Bible. Imagine being able to talk to the Creator of heaven and earth. See, we love the creation, right? But we gotta love the Creator more. Imagine talking to that Creator. That is an honor and a privilege. The King of Glory. I don't know, that should be exciting, isn't it? Talking to the King of Glory. So devoting a time of prayer should be of greatest importance of our daily lives. Every day. We saw those frequency chart. There's some daily, weekly, monthly, seldom, and it should be our goal to make it daily. Church, it is our responsibility and privilege to pray for all people. Join us in our prayer meeting. So I'm calling out to you, CFLC. We will not stop praying until God tells CFLC what he told Moses. I will pardon them because you have requested. I will bless your family because you have requested. I will be your family because you have requested. And I will save your family because you have requested. I will save them from the pit of hell because you have requested. Rise and 